In my lab, we study what happens in people's brains when they're exposed to different kinds of messages, for example, from mass media or from other people, and how that information about what's happening in their brains can help us forecast what kinds of messages are going to be most effective in changing people's behavior at scale. I was working in a number of different kinds of contexts, primarily health-related contexts. I was trying to solve problems about how do you get people to change their behavior, and it turns out that that is a really hard problem, like trying to get people to change their behavior, even when they want to, is really tricky. And so what we found over the past 10 years or so is that if we look at what happens in people's brains, we can get additional information that's hidden even to themselves about what is being registered as valuable or self-relevant or socially relevant, and that those kinds of processes can then help us understand what kinds of messages are likely to um, change the behavior of larger groups of people at scale or get shared um, by people around the world. It gives us this additional tool in our toolbox for understanding literally what's happening in people's minds, in their brains, as they are doing things that we do every day in our day-to-day -day lives but don't necessarily um, have conscious access to. Oh, this is, okay, so um, basically, the this is showing the same. Like the insula is showing a similar yeah. pattern to the striatum yeah. that you uh, saw. Also trending okay. towards. So we use a number of different kinds of tools to see what happens in different people's brains. The primary one that we use in my lab is called functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. And there we use a large magnet to measure changes in blood oxygen levels in people's brains. And we use that as a proxy for brain activity. So basically, when we use fMRI, we put people in a MRI tube, and um, we use that to infer what's happening in different parts of their brains as they're doing different kinds of tasks. In CN Lab, we start every lab meeting with a five-minute silliness, um, and today we are going to do a very simple silliness. It's called Zip Zap Zop, and we have done that before. And the In my lab, one of the things that we also value a lot is trying to create uh, moments of silliness and joy and bonding. Yes. <laughs> Zip! Zap! Zip. Zap. Zap. Zip. Zap. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Zap. In my undergraduate teaching, I try to give the students a really hands-on experience for what real-world research is like. So instead of me standing in front of the classroom just telling them how awesome it is to do research, I try to create an environment where we can execute real projects. So in that context, they can design a project that answers a question that actually nobody knows the answer to, and then by the end of the semester we can try to have part of the answer to that. There's a ton of research about how having a strong purpose is amazing for your health and for your happiness, and so kind of at a meta level, just like in our research we're trying to help other people achieve better health, more happiness, like overall lead the life that they want to lead, like for our students as well, if we can help them figure out like what's their purpose and then how do they execute on that, like I think that's going to help make their lives awesome too. So that's part of what we're trying to do here.